All right, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode. So last time, I think we stopped at checking all of the lower uh, portion of the engine, checking the, um, the, the crankshaft run out and the end play and all that stuff. So now I am on step 12 of the pre-assembly procedure, step 12, which is install the camshaft. Now, um, there's 36 steps in pre-assembly. So you can see this is not a fast project, all right? And while I, while I don't show it on these videos, before I do each step and before I record and start working, everything I do working is on film in case I uh, need to come back and check something that I did. But I always spend at least an hour reading the book before I actually start working on it. Um, sometimes I have to read it again while I'm filming and before I do it. But I always spend about an hour researching what I'm going to do in these next couple steps. So while um, it appears as though it says 12, install camshaft, and believe me, I'm not skipping all this text. I actually have already read it. So, um, so anyway, uh, here we have from Summit a performance camshaft. Uh, this is a stage one cam. So it's not going to be uh, terribly loud, but it will give me uh, quite a bit of extra horsepower over uh, over uh, standard or stock. So I am literally opening this up for the first time, as you can clearly see here. So, um, and then in the box they give you some nice uh, uh, stats about it. It's an LS1, okay, um, cam which clearly you could use on any of the LSs, depending on what you want performance-wise. So, now there's a few differences between this and the stock. For my LC9 engine, uh, the stock was a one screw, center screw, but this clearly is three screws. So I bought the screw kit to, uh, to make that work. So what I'm going to do is set this down gently and try to wipe it up. It's, you know, they put a lot of oil on here, which is fine. Keep it from rusting. We want to make sure it's nice and clean before we put it in the engine. And this is certainly something you don't want to drop. So be very, very careful. I should be putting foam on the garage floor here because I have a tendency to drop things. So I'm very, very nervous about this. Actually, I'm gonna make this baby nice and clean. All right. So the instructions basically say to, you know, obviously we wanna, you know, lubricate the journals the bearing journals, so bearing journal, bearing journal, bearing journal, bearing journal, bearing, bearing, bearing journal. And it says you can go ahead and lube the lobes along the way, but you stick them in one at a time. So here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put some oil on here. It basically suggested to do the first two. I'm gonna lube that up and then very, gently stick that in as gentle as ever right because you don't want to foul up you don't want to foul up the see so now you could go ahead and rest it on the front two journals while you go and grab your oil and lube up the rest of the way right so baby up and you know what I could do I could stick my hand in here through through where the cylinders are to help guide it in all right all right see what I'm doing here boy this is tricky 
This is trickier than I thought it was going to be. Tell you the truth. I thought this thing would just slide on in. I'm hoping I didn't ding up any of the uh, the bearings, the cam bearings. We shall see. Fortunately, I can kind of look down and see what all I need to do to get this to slide in. And there we have it. See, just like so. So this guy is in all the way. All right. And honestly, I'm just turning it by hand and it's spinning nicely. So there's no issues here. So I'm gonna take off these gloves and put on a new, new pair. I'll be right back. All right, so now I'm gonna install the cam retainer plate. This, by the way, is the old one. I'm almost certain I bought a new one because, I mean, I bought everything else brand new, so I wouldn't know I'd gotten this. And, and actually, it's probably not a bad idea to get a new one because it will have a new gasket built into it. But I tore the garage apart and I can't find it, so I'm going to look on my... All, <laughs> as detailed as I am, you know I have receipts for everything, so I'm going to look on all my records and see where this, if I actually did buy it or not. So, in the meantime, to continue, I'm going to use the old one. And um, I cleaned it up. So basically now you just put a little bit of oil on the gasket. And I'm just gonna liberally sp spread this around. It's not gonna cause a problem. So, and then this gets mounted up in here. All right, and then I'm gonna use whatever oil I have on my fingers to lube up these bolts. And actually, I'm gonna find the torque. Uh, these are torques. So we're gonna pause for a moment, be right back, I'm gonna find the right torque. Okay, so I found the right Torx bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this hand tight for now. I'm gonna check the book and see what the torque setting is. All right. So this calls for 11 foot-pounds. All right, I'm gonna set this to 11. There's 10, there's 11. We're gonna lock that down. We're gonna... <laughs> I don't have a Torx screwdriver, uh, uh, I mean a, uh, a torque screwdriver uh, so what I'm doing is I'm using a torque wrench with uh, sort of an adapter if you will to uh, torque it down the proper specs and hopefully All right. so in case you're wondering there's a this is a 3 8 torque wrench uh, going to a one quarter adapter, going to a one quarter inch uh, <clears throat> socket. Okay, and I've got it set for 11 pounds. All right. And rest assured, before final assembly, I will have a torque screwdriver. All right, so the retainer plate is in. Next, it says, after installing your crank key into the crank snout, 
which actually it's already in here. But I noticed this crank has a secondary uh, crank key. So uh, that's interesting because the stock only had one. So, um, and it mentions this in the book here that that some of the uh, aftermarkets have a second one. So um, I'm gonna have to get us. Uh, I'm gonna have to get a, a key to stick in that second one. Um, in fact, not to belabor the point here, because I'm gonna have to wrap up this video here uh, soon. But while we're on the topic, it says here. Uh, some cranks, especially aftermarket ones, use a second key located further outward on the snout to properly index aftermarket harmonic dampeners and prevent any chance of it spinning on the snout. If using such components, install the second key at this time as well. If using an adjustable timing set, be sure to install, install the crank sprocket using the correct key, key way you determined during pre-assembly. And number three, do not use a hard hammer to, to hit and install the crank sprockets, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so, looks like we are gonna have to take an extended pause in this episode, because I do not have the key. So, I can't continue on until I get the key, the second key. So, and this frequently happens when you're new at engine building. You don't have everything you need. So, um, so I think what I'll probably do is go ahead and order or research this retaining plate uh, and order a new one if I don't have one already. Although this old one looks pretty good. I mean, the plate, I'm more concerned about the gasket than I am about the plate, obviously. The plate ain't going to wear, but you want a good gasket. So I'm going to get a new plate. And then I'm going to get the second key. And then I might go ahead and order a pair of uh, torque screwdrivers, torque setting screwdrivers. And let's see, what else do I need to get? God only knows what else I'll find along the way. But that's why this whole project and these episodes are taking so long. And we're getting, it was easy tearing the engine down, right? Because you didn't, you know, you, you only needed a couple very basic tools. But putting it back together, that's a whole diff different story for somebody who's brand new and, you know, hasn't run into these issues before. So you're experiencing with me along the way. So anyway, we might be, it might take a couple days. It depends on how quickly Amazon or Summit can get these things to me. But we will pick up where we left off in the next episode. All right. Well, so um, on a previous video, I think it may have been the last, you may have heard me mention that I'm going to stop or pause because I didn't get this key right here, that I was missing this key, and therefore um, I wouldn't be able to go ahead and continue. Here's the new um, crank uh, timing sprocket, by the way, and believe it or not, <laughs> this mostly slides on, the way, on all the way. You can see I'm lining up the, the little key here the little key here with uh, with that key, that little notch out. And look how, now I'll have to obviously press it on the rest of the way. But as it turns out, I went ahead and ordered that key, but I, I don't need it because the new harmonic balancer that I got doesn't have a, does not have a uh, notch for that key. So there's none in there. So, you know, it'll just, it'll just kind of ride on here without the, without the need of a key. All right. So, so what I'm going to do here is set up the camera so that you can kind of watch me as I press this on. All right. So I'll be right back in a moment. All right. So the way I'm going to press this new crank sprocket is I'm going to take the old one and the old bolt, and I'm going to put it over top, and then I'm going to thread this on, and then just use that to ratchet that down. And 
that is a 24, 24 millimeter. All right, that was pretty easy, actually. So now we are going to flip the engine over and start putting on the timing, uh, timing chain. So the book says, turn the crankshaft until the alignment mark on its sprocket is at the 12 o'clock position. Okay. Where's the 12 o'clock? Where's the timing mark? I'm wondering if it's the... Or is it at the end here? Oh, maybe it's that guy right there. That's what I'm wondering if it's that right there. <laughs> that's the only, that's the only thing that I see. Turn the crankshaft until the alignment mark on its sprocket is at 12 o'clock position. All right. Spin the camshaft by hand until the cam locating pin is facing to the right, roughly three o'clock. Make sure not to push the cam backwards at all. This pin placement will help get the cam sprocket locating mark roughly where it needs to be. All right. All right, that's three o'clock. Lubricate the thrust surface at the back of the cam sprocket. Lubricate the thrust surface at the back of the cam sprocket. So right here, or let me get my cam sprocket out. So it appears to be that this is the yeah, this is the back of it here. And this would be the thrust surface. So we're gonna lubricate that.
just like the book shows. All right. Lubricate the thrust surface at the back of the cam sprocket and soak the timing chain in oil. Oh, all right. Uh, let's see here. I need to find a cup. Okay, got a cup. We're gonna timing chains in the oil. We're gonna go ahead and fill this guy up with oil. I know, I know. It's probably to have a more shallower pan and have it laying on its side than wasting a whole cup of oil. I get that. But that's the first, that's the only cup I had uh, in hand. <laughs> All right. So. All right, lubricate the thrust surface at the back of the cam sprocket, soak the timing chain. Once this is done, take your cam sprocket and hang your timing chain on it. Reach behind the engine with one hand to hold the cam from moving backwards. Uh, this also allows you to turn the cam slightly if needed. Put the cam sprocket in place while simultaneously wrapping the timing chain around the crank sprocket. You may have to take the cam sprocket and chain off and on, on and off the engine a few times until you get the marks on the cam and crank sprockets to line up vertically. They should be at six o'clock and 12 o'clock respectively. All right. So this should be pointed down at six o'clock. Let me see if I can get this right. Let me practice a few times. All right. So that's 12 o'clock and that's six o'clock. And we just need to get the chain to go around. All right. Let's see if we can do that. Nobody said this job was going to be clean. And this job is not clean. Not so sure you'll see too many more prime boxes of prime packages in the future but that's another story all right let's see if we can somehow finagle this on Get it on the first try? Well, by God, I did. Got it on the first try. Look at that. 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and it's on there. Look at that. First try. By God. <laughs> There's some slop in there. It's a little loose. But that's what this guy's for, all right? I suppose I probably should have put that on first, huh? Daggummit. Looks like this pin is makes it easier to put the chain on. 
and then tightening it up. All right, let's see what the book has to say. All right, so put the cam sprocket in place while simultaneously wrapping the timing chain around the crank sprocket, which I did. You may have to take the cam sprocket and chain off and off the engine a few times until you get the marks on the cam and the crank sprockets to line them vertically. They should be at 6 and 12 o'clock respectively. Start the cam bolts by hand. Some aftermarket timing chains afford very little slack, making this difficult. Torque the eight to torque to 18 to 26 foot pounds or cams with three three small retaining bolts or 66 foot pounds plus 40 degrees cams with one large important notes be sure to use the correct sprocket markings determined during pre-assembly if using an aftermarket adjustable timing set engines equipped with vvt have the cam phaser mounted to the front of the cam sprocket we're not doing that and the assembly is secured to the camshaft by an actuator solenoid valve in lieu of a bolt. It must be tightened to 48 foot-pounds plus 90 degrees. Not doing that. The timing chain tensioner, aha, on a Quinn engine so equipped, may need to be installed before the chain and cam sprocket. I should have read this first. In this case, the tensioner will need to be Temporarily deactivated using a pin, uh, etc., while the chain are put in place. Engines equipped with a timing chain dampener, which sits in between, should install it at this time. All right, so we're not using a dampener because that just that looks like a bow tie uh, or a bat wing, as it's called, going in between. We're using the tensioner, which I should have put on before I put the all right, so well, we get to do this yet again. All right, removing the timing chain. We're going to set this here. And we're going to put the tensioner on. All right. And let me lube, lube this up a little bit because we're going to take this off. It's tough to work with greasy hands. All right, what's the torque spec on this? It doesn't say. <laughs> so, uh, what the torque is. So we're gonna go with something probably around 20 pounds right now. I think that'll get us in good shape. And when we do final assembly, we'll double check on that. All right, so if I could, too much glare. Foot pounds, all right, so we're trying to go to 20. And that, my friend, is 20. 
Let's lock it in place. All right, one more time. trickier with this tensioner. A lot trickier with this tensioner. So this made a world of difference just removing the removing the pin to get it on here. All right, are we lined up. Yeah. Three o'clock, six o'clock, twelve o'clock. Next we need to put the cam bolts in. All right. So let's go ahead and get those opened up. All right, it says here, start the cam bolts by hand. Torque 18 to 26 foot pounds. That one's threading in a little bit odd. So, oh. yeah, see that's not, something screwed up there. it but they're they're not okay I think it's the holes aren't precisely lined up. You see that? Let me see if I can get down low. I don't know if you can see that. All right, let's take this out. Done, yep. All right, there we go. I think we're in business now. and nice and easy there's a little bit of drag so what I need to do is get the screwdriver to push up on this
that uh, takes all the slack out of it. All right. So remember, this is set to 20. And we're just going to go ahead and tighten these down to about 20. Same here. All right, how are we gonna stop this from turning? Exciting times. All right, this next step in the book. So back to pre-assembly. After doing this, spin the crank over and watch for any physical interference between the cam sprocket and the block or retaining retainer plate uh, bolts. All right, so are we seeing any problems with anything? See any problems? Nope. Looks good. Mount a dial indicator on the back or on the front of the block to measure camshaft end play. Pull, push, pull the cam fore and aft. There should be a small amount of movement, at, at least one one thousandth. Though you may not see any movement at all. In this case, if the cam spins freely, you're probably okay, as you know your cam retainer plate is not being smashed um, between the cam and the sprocket. Fore or aft cam movement should not exceed 0.012 inch. If it does, there may be a problem with your cam retainer plate. All right, it's easier to do this on the back. So we're gonna zero this out. And then what we need to do is push on the cam and see how much it moves. You could see there's a little bit, but by God, that thing is hardly budging. That's hardly budging. I mean, I'm pushing, I'm pushing here, and I'm pushing here. Let me zero this out again one more time. I mean, <laughs> it's not going anywhere. All right, things in there tight, All right? So let's see what the book has to say about that. The book says, if the cam, it says here, push and pull the cam fore and aft. That means kind of this way and that way. And then it says, there should be a small amount of movement, at least one one thousandth. Though you may not see any movement at all. In this case, if the cam spins freely, you are probably okay, as you know your cam retainer plate is not being smashed between the cam and the sprocket, okay? Fore aft cam movement should not exceed 0, 0.12. That does not move, 0, 0.12. <laughs> so 
All right, so I think we're all set up and in good shape here. Although, you know, I have to admit, it is a little bit on the tight side, um, but it spins, it does spin freely. So, um, with a little effort. So that's, that's the situation there. Um, the next step is temporarily assemble pistons to connecting rods. So that should be a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to getting in, digging into the pistons. So with that, I'm gonna say sign off for tonight and see you later. Have a good night. And we'll be back in the next episode to go to pre-assembly step 14. Thanks so much for watching.